please bow your head in prayer. Thank you. Almighty God, as we gather here on this sunny afternoon, bless us, the graduates, as we celebrate our accomplishments. May you bless the University of the Virgin Islands, faculty and staff, dignitaries, leaders, family and friends who have guided us to this momentous and memorable milestone. Give your blessings over our beautiful Virgin Islands nestled in the tranquil turquoise waters of the Caribbean Sea and bathed by the warm golden rays of sunshine. Oh dear Father, we thank you for the blessings of knowledge, leadership, and compassion. We thank you for the privilege of scholarship in our chosen areas and gaining new skills. Lord, today, we are proud and enjoy the celebration of our collective successes. Lord, we pray that you will guide us in our lifelong journey as we use our craft and expertise to bless the world with our gifts and carry our talents. Please foster within us a continued passion for learning as we carry onwards. Thank you for guiding us as we gained knowledge, made friends, and dreamed of dreams that charmed our imaginations. Father, as we dedicate this celebration to you in remembrance of your love for the world and the heavens above, we thank you for all that you have made possible in the universe filled with hope, friendship, in prayer, amen.
good afternoon. It is my honor to present the president of the University of the Virgin Islands, Dr. David Hall, who will preside over today's ceremony. You may be seated. Good afternoon. It is with great excitement, joy, and respect that I welcome you to this 59th commencement ceremony of UVI. This is a sacred moment, and we thank each of you for being present. By the power vested in me, I hereby officially declare that the commencement ceremony for the vivacious, iconic, profound class of 2023 at the University of the Virgin Islands can now begin. And if you didn't catch it, their adjectives amount to VIPs. This gathering is so special that there are many VIPs who have joined us today, and I would like to recognize and honor them. We have present Honorable Ariel Smith, Attorney General nominee, and acting governor of the U.S. Virgin Islands. We recognize Honorable Governor Albert Bryan Jr., who couldn't be with us today due to his speaking engagement out of the territory. Governor Bryan, however, has provided congratulatory recorded remarks that will be shared later in the program. We also recognize the Honorable Stacy Plaskett, Virgin Islands Delegate to Congress, who couldn't be with us today either due to congressional commitments. Congresswoman Plaskett has, however, provided congratulatory remarks that we will share later in the program. We also have with us the Honorable Novell Francis Jr. Senate President of the 31st Legislature of the Virgin Islands and other members of the 31st Legislature who he will introduce later. Oren Roebuck, Vice Chair, UVI Board of Trustees and other board members who are present, please stand and be recognized. Our keynote speaker, who will be introduced shortly, Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. <laughs> Honorary doctorate recipient, Ms. Clemma William Lewis. <laughs> Dr. Camille McHale, Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs and other members of the President Cabinet, we ask them to stand. We have important student speakers. Dominique Galibert, who provided the invocation. Michael Bell who is the class speaker for 2023. And Ariel Joseph, who will provide the benediction. You have already heard from our marshal, Dr. Kenny Hendrickson. Our academic deans are present and they will be introduced later in the program, but I would ask the deans from the various schools and colleges to please stand. Our shared governance leaders, Dr. Stuart Ketchum, who is the faculty executive committee, um, or who is of the faculty executive committee, 
uh, we would ask him to stand and other faculty members uh, who are present. And we would also like to introduce uh, all of them together. If they could please stand and receive our appreciation. Thank you. Dr. Maria Fleming, who is the UVI Staff Council Chair and other members of the Staff Council, if you could be recognized. From our UVI Senate, we have Dr. Jeremy Thibodeau, who we would ask for him to stand and any other members of the UVI Senate. And serving in a different role, we have Ariel Joseph, who is the Student Government Association President. And we would ask other members of SGA to stand as well. We started a tradition a few years ago, once we got to the point where we had graduates who were celebrating their 50th reunion. So the College of the Virgin Islands class of 1973 that are celebrating their 50th anniversary, we would ask them to stand. In this group is Marion Peterson, Dr. Lawrence Lewis, Ms. Judith Malloy, and our own Dean, Beverly Lansacor. Thank you for creating a tradition that these graduates will follow. I also would like to recognize my wife, Dr. Marilyn Braithwaite Hall, who is a tremendous supporter and ambassador for UVI. And last but not least, faculty and other members of the university, the parents, guardians, and family members, friends, well-wishers, ladies and gentlemen, our most special guests present today are the members of the vivacious, iconic, profound class of 2023. Welcome. <laughs> but because we know you did not make it here alone, I would ask for you to stand and give a standing ovation to your parents, family members, significant other, and friends who helped you to get to this place. Thank you. This is a very special moment in your life and I applaud you for making it happen. Not only do the adjectives of this class indicate that you are VIPs, you have members among you who are certainly very special people. I want to share with you a very brief personal story of a student. There is a student in the graduating class who many thought would never be here today. That person is a first generation college student who carried around doubts about the ability to succeed and some around the student also had serious doubt. Many of the student's friends from high school left the island for greener pastures and to explore the world. St. Croix was too small for their imagination. Despite free tuition, there were serious financial challenges for the student because fees, room, and board were not covered. Despite being committed to healthy living, COVID invaded the student's immune system and changed life in so many ways. Studying online was, was challenging and not having daily personal contacts created an immeasurable emotional wound. This emotional roller coaster lasted for close to two years, 
adjusting to vaccination requirements and testing regimens created another level of anxiety. And then when the finish line was in sight, a serious health challenge visited the students' close family members. Though St. Croix was big enough, this student participated in the Passport to the World program and was able to visit Ghana and Spain. Not because they had the money, but because scholarships the university provided took the student to these places on the other side of the world. And though the university was supportive, there were always those moments that made the student feel that no one cared. Somewhat battered, somewhat bruised, joyful and excited, that resilient student will walk across the stage today graduating with honors. <clears throat> I have not revealed the name of the student because this story is a composite of your individual and collective journey to this place. I believe each of you can see a part of yourself in the story. You and others had doubts, but you overcame them. The pandemic had an enormous impact on you, but you did not let it stop you. We applaud you because you stayed in the Virgin Islands for your education, and yet many of you saw and experienced the world through student exchange, passport to the world, and the numerous conferences that we sent you to. We did drop the ball at times, but you picked it up and scored, and now is your moment to dance in the end zone. Your individual and collective story is what inspires all of us on this stage to do the work that we do. And if we knew all of the forces that stood in your way, we would truly be amazed. But we do know that your story is not fictional. Your story, like you, is real, compelling, and will always be part of the UVI story. Continue to write your story through your living and continue to write your story as you change the world. I want to close my remarks by recognizing that many of you and this entire university lost a special source of support this past year. Hedda Finch Simpson, Dean of Student Affairs, and an employee of this university for over 20 years passed away this semester. Hedda was a strong supporter, guide, and confident for so many of you sitting here today. And your presence was impacted by her work and dedication. We will strive on this campus to always keep her spirit and contribution alive. And we are honored that her daughter, Chantel, is present with us today. Please stand. Thank you for your mother's legacy. She is a part of the story of so many of the students who are graduating today. And finally, before introducing our keynote speaker, to demonstrate that you are truly VIPs, it was reported to me this morning that your class giving rate for this campus is 86%. We ask all graduating seniors to make a gift to the university so you can get into the spirit of giving after you leave here. And your commitment of giving is one of the highest we have had on this campus or any campus since we started. Congratulations, <laughs> VIPs. 
at commencement, it is important for the university to identify an individual to deliver the commencement address who exemplifies the values which we want our students to emulate. We want a keynote speaker who has lived life and contributed to life in a very special and unique way. Our keynote speaker for today has all of these qualities and many more. If words could talk, they would tell you that very few persons alive have used them more eloquently than our keynote speaker. If evil and injustice would one day speak, they would tell us that no one has been as consistently and as powerfully critical of their existence than our keynote speaker. And if hip hop, rap, and the blues sang a song together, they would say that no one uses their lyrics for more profound and artistic purposes like our commencement speaker. Dr. Michael Eric Dyson is the Centennial Chair at Vanderbilt University and serves as University Distinguished Professor of African American and Diaspora Studies in the College of Arts and Science and University Distinguished Professor of Ethics and Society in the Divinity School. He is also a New York Times contributing opinion writer and a contributing editor of the New Republic and of ESPN's The Undefeated website. His rise from humble roots in Detroit to his present perch as a world-class intellectual, noted author of 21 books, prominent leader and national media fixture, testifies to his extraordinary talent. Dr. Dyson has also taught at other universities like Georgetown, Brown University, the University of North Carolina, Columbia, and the University of Pennsylvania. Dr. Dyson has won many prestigious honors, including an American Book Award and two NAACP Image Awards. Ebony Magazine cited him as one of the 100 most influential African Americans and as one of the 150 most powerful black persons in the nation. Dr. Dyson influence has spread far beyond the academy in his role as a renowned orator, highly sought after lecturer and ordained Baptist minister. For the last quarter of a century, Dr. Dyson has also enlivened public debate across the media landscape on every major television and radio show in the country. Dr. Dyson's pioneering scholarship has had a profound effect on American ideas. His 1994 book, Making Malcolm, The Myth and Meaning of Malcolm X, was named one of the most important African-American books of the 20th century and was also named a notable book of the year by the New York Times. According to Book Industry Bible Publisher Weekly, Dyson's 2001 book, Holler If You Hear Me, Searching for Tupac Shakur, helped to make books on hip hop commercially viable. Dr. Dyson's recent book, Entertaining Race, Performing Blackness in America is a testament to his consistent celebration of the outsized impact of African-American culture and politics on this country. I could go on and on, but it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you today our commencement speaker for 2023, Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. Thank you so kindly, President Hall, and to President Hall, and to all of the distinguished guests 
and scholars and administrators at this great university, to the Attorney General Ariel Smith, to Congresswoman Stacy Plaskett, to Congresswoman Dr. Donna Christian Christensen, to the governor, to all of the potentates and prophets, priests and writers of preambles, to all of the professors and all of the players in the game of 2023, I bid you good afternoon and thank God that this day has arrived. I want to celebrate Sister Williams Lewis, soon to be Dr. Williams Lewis, for her noble work and her participation in the well-known gang of DST. <laughs> I want to thank the First Lady, Dr. Braithwaite Hall. She, I, and Dr. Hall had a great dinner last night, and it was a wonderful experience to see this chocolate charming gentleman of noble stature, of brilliant mind, of insightful intellect, and of acute analytical abilities, and yet such passionate commitment to the students of this great university. Let's give him a round of applause. Now I know it's hot up in here. As Nellie said, just getting back with Ashanti. It's getting hot in here, so let us take off our robes. Uh, <laughs> I know y'all into them young rappers. Ain't nobody really, we don't even know what they saying, okay? We old school. When the rim is in the system, ain't no telling. Will I love them? Will I diss them? That's what they be yelling. I'm a by blood, not relay y'all. Y'all still chase some. I'll replay some, huh? I don't know what they say in these days. Every time I turn around and what they say, I'm saying, say, know what I'm saying? No. I've been black for 64 years. I don't even know what you just had said. <laughs> Only part I know, walk it like you talk it. Hey, walk it like you talk it. Whoa. All right. I didn't spend half my time talking about that. Let me get right to the point. If I were to give a title to these reflections, I would simply ask, are you down with VIP? Y'all 90s hip hoppers, like some of these professors up here, y'all don't know nothing about that, do you? You're down with OPP? Yeah. Oh, look at y'all. <laughs> you nasty, naughty children. <laughs> you have chosen three adjectives to modify the noun of your being, and they are arresting. Vivacious, a word that means full of life. And to be young, black, and full of life is both a wondrous prospect and a vicious indictment of a white supremacist culture that refuses to acknowledge the humanity of African people. The reality is we're living in a time when we have to remind the world that black lives matter. And you are part of that generation, the class of 2023. Look at you, chocolate charming, ebony ecstasy and furled in coffee flesh. Look at you, bright and articulate and beautiful and able to express yourselves. And we celebrate that, but in the, quote, real world, that causes a problem to certain people. If you are articulate, if you ain't scratching your head and asking where to go, if you saying you know what it is, vivacity, vivacious, you are full of life. You are the expression of the ancestors who poured into you, ancestors who didn't know how to speak the king's English to the queen's taste. Yeah, we saw the coronation of one king, but 
Martin Luther is the king we recognize. The sun never set on the British Empire. American imperialism, deep and profound. We understand that that's real, but the vivaciousness of blackness has created the world, has made the world what it is today. What would the world be without the blackness that we see around us? What would the world be without the blackness of St. Croix? What would the world be without your intelligence and your power? What would the world be without James Baldwin or Ralph Ellison or Beyonce and Jay-Z? What would the world be without old dirty bastards? Me and Mariah go back like babies and pacifiers. Y'all don't know nothing about that. What would the world be without the intellects and the scholars and the lawyers and the doctors and the nurses and the ditch diggers and the engineers and the custodians and all of us together? This vivacious character of blackness is what sets you apart. And when you go into the world, be unapologetically black. You ain't got to hang your head for nobody. You proud to be black. We ain't saying we better than nobody else. We just saying we good as anybody else. And you know we cold at what we do. Because we study harder to get half the distance that other people were given at birth. But we ain't complaining about it. We're doing something about it. We are engaging in serious commitment to the livelihood that our ancestors has bequeathed us. And so I say to you today, I'm glad you are vivacious. Be colorful. Be vivid. Be full of life. Because the world is attempting to take that life and snatch it away. You can be on a subway just singing some Michael Jackson songs. And because you have a mental health challenge, they will squeeze the life out of you. You can be policed to death, but you know we keep rising. We are vivacious, that living embodiment of our black identity. And then iconic. I like that term. It used to mean simply referring to an iconic figure. But in the etymological evolution of Western empiricism and philosophical depth, iconic means you are embodying the very ideas of excellence. Now, you know I'm, I'm proud of that. I can see y'all smart. I can see you dedicated to excellence. And black excellence is a salvation to this world. The excellence that you exhibit in whatever field you choose to study, in whatever role you choose to play. You are burgeoning icons. Now you've got established icons up in here. Our sister getting her honorary doctorate, our president, our, our attorney general, our first lady, but y'all are icons too, in the making. You are becoming iconic figures who embody the excellence that has been given to you as a birthright of your existence on this earth. And sometimes we make icons out of the wrong people. We worship in people who like orange apparitions that get on TV last night. Don't know nothing about high intelligence. Don't know nothing about deep and engaging reality. Just a menace to society. Mad that you wasn't as, as smart as the man who had the job before you did. They got mad at him because he had a tan suit on. And now they take a man who reads the Bible upside down. Talking about true Corinthians. And then just got convicted of grabbing what he thought was his and trying to blame it on hip-hop. Don't blame that on hip-hop. Yeah, Biggie said, some say that makes the sex spectacular. Make me look you from your neck to your back then up. But what did he say? If it's all right with you, we love him. That's asking for permission. That is seeking consent. This full of nefarious negativity. This imbecilic embodiment of unsaturated grief. This man who is unmolested by enlightenment. If I had more time, I'd tell the truth. 
And so you, my brothers and sisters, deal with real icons, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr., Bob Marley embodying the Calypso singer, Mr. Harry Belafonte, who went out of here at 96 years old. These are the icons that we look up to, not politicians who are full of mirth and misery. And then, as I end, you are profound. <laughs> That's deep and penetrating. Don't apologize for being smart. I carry a particular stereotype, and I want you to forgive me. When I come to the islands full of black people, my stereotype is all of y'all smart. All of y'all articulate. All of y'all, even if you went to the eighth grade, you got a sense of the tradition of intelligence that produced you. I ain't never been disappointed in my stereotype. Every time I meet a member of your tribe, I am impressed with the profundity of thought. Because you ain't got to go to school to be able to read. Frederick Douglass said, knowledge unfits a child for slavery. The great thinker George Clinton from Parliament Funkadelic said, free your mind and your ass will follow. The president gave me permission for one curse word here today. And so we over in a place where they're outlawing books, where they're banning books. I thought you said y'all was, not y'all were, y'all was the embodiment of high intelligence. But you trying to keep black folk from reading books and you trying to keep white folk from reading books about black folk. Why, what they trying to hide? What they scared of? Because we cold-blooded even when you dog us. Put us into slavery, we keep rising. Put us in Jim Crow, we keep rising. Put us in colonialism, we keep rising. Put us in imperialism, we keep rising. We continue to rise regardless of what you do to us. And so as I take my seat, you be profound. You be deep without apology. You read as much as you can. Talk as much as you can. Express as much as you can. Transmit as much knowledge as you can. Because you, my friends, are the real VIPs. Vivacious, iconic, and profound. And as my man Jay-Z says, God forgive me for my brass delivery, but I remember vividly what these streets did to me. Imagine me allowing you to nitpick at me, portray me like a pick -a -knee. No, we ain't going to do that. No, my teachers couldn't reach me and my mama couldn't beat me hard enough to match the pain of my pop not seeing me. So with that disdain in my membrane got on my brain, blank the world, my defense came. Our defense is here. We must love each other. And the profundity of our love for each other is the measure of the depth of our humanity. Like that old black woman said, be who you is and not who you ain't. Because if you is what you ain't, you am what you're not. Peace. we have been blessed to have very articulate and eloquent commencement speakers. But I think this has set the standard. Thank you, Dr. Dyson. Honorary degrees are bestowed upon individuals by universities as a way to recognize the outstanding accomplishments of those whom the institution admires and desire their students to emulate. Today, we will bestow this honor upon two individuals whose contributions in their lifetimes have demonstrated how to live as outstanding citizens of the world. The first, Dr. Michael Eric Dyson, prolific author, 
majestic orator, penetrating and wise social and political critic, public intellectual and best-selling author. Dr. Dyson's eloquent writings have inspired Vanity Fair magazine to describe him as one of the most graceful and lucid intellectual writings on race and politics today. And Dyson's 2005 New York Times bestseller is Bill Cosby Wright, or has the black middle class lost its mind, helped to jumpstart a national conversation on the black poor. Dyson's book, the critically acclaimed New York Times bestseller, The Black Presidency, Barack Obama, and the politics of race in America has been described by the New York Times as an interpretive miracle. It was a finalist for the prestigious 2016 Kerr Cox Prize. Dr. Dyson's book, the widely praised New York Times bestsellers, Tears We Cannot Stop, a sermon to white America has been described by the New York Times as one of the most frank and searing discussions on race, a deeply serious, urgent book which should take its place in the tradition of Baldwin's The Fire Next Time and King's Why Can't We Wait. Dr. Dyson's other book, That Truth, What Truth Sounds Like, RFK, James Baldwin, and our unfinished conversations about race in America has been called, and I quote, an incisive look at the roles of politicians, artists, intellectuals, and activists in confronting racial injustice and effecting change, and an eloquent response to an urgent and still unresolved dilemma. Dr. Dyson's legendary ascent from welfare father to Princeton PhD, from church pastor to college professor, from a factory worker who didn't start college until he was 21, may help explain why writer Naomi Wolf terms him, and I quote, the ideal public intellectual of our time. He is the recipient of numerous honorary degrees, though the one he receives today will be among his most cherished. <laughs> I would ask Vice Chair Oren Roebuck to bring forward the honorary Michael Eric Dyson. Therefore, we are proud to bestow upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. In recognition of this degree, Vice Chair Roebuck will vest you with a hood and I will present you with a diploma from the University of the Virgin Islands. We are honored to have you counted among our graduates. Congratulations, Dr. Dyson. Clemma S. Williams Lewis, inspiring protector of the vulnerable and profound servant of justice, peace and healing. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stated, and I quote, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Clemma S. Lewis is a woman who has chosen to live her life in the pursuit of justice for those marginalized in society. 
through words and actions. Her tireless work has touched the lives of those she helped to heal, including victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse. Her life's work for justice does not only pertain to victims of violent crimes, but also to workers. She has served as the union representative for Steelworkers of America and as the building representative for the American Federation of Teachers. Ms. Lewis' interest in justice issues can be traced back to her undergraduate days at Illinois State University, where she pursued a major in criminal justice. Upon completing her bachelor's of science degree, she relocated to St. Croix in 1979 and assumed the responsibility as the first female social worker with the Youth Services Administration at the Youth Rehabilitation Center. Upon completing her master's of art degree from the University of Phoenix in counselor education, she served as a counselor for the day adult education program and for 10 years worked as the guidance counselor at Evelyn Williams Elementary School. While working at Evelyn Williams, Ms. Lewis began volunteering at the Women's Coalition of St. Croix. She was attracted to the Women's Coalition because of the organization's position on fighting all forms of oppression, including physical abuse, sexual assault, racism, and prejudice. Initially, she volunteered as an advocate and then assumed the position of chairperson of advocates, coordinator of training and support groups, chairwoman of the board of directors, <coughs> excuse me, and supervisor of the summer staff. She also served as co-director and then her present position as executive director. In addition to her work-related responsibilities, Ms. Lewis is an active volunteer in groups that are close to her heart, including Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, the Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Council, the St. Croix Child Abuse and Neglect Task Force, and St. Croix Child Abuse Multidisciplinary Team, and a member of Altona Baptist Church for over 30 years. Additionally, she serves on the board of VI Interstate Compact for Juveniles and the USV Commission on Aging. With a background in working with children, Ms. Lewis was adamant about getting the territory to pass the Child Protection Act, which was passed in 2002. She believes strongly that adults must care for children and be their voice. As a social worker, Ms. Lewis values the critical importance of the family in raising children who are productive members of society. As a mother, she believes that her greatest achievement was raising two sons with the skills necessary for a smooth transition into adulthood. She is proud of her family, son Jamil and his wife Brandy and their son Miles, Anaji and his wife Keisha and their daughters Adaja and Esmeri. Ms. Lewis is grateful for her fiance Desmond Hicks for his unending support and love. Ms. Lewis is known for her love of elephants. She believes that elephants depict a sign of strength, knowledge, endurance, and intelligence. In many ways, she embodies those same characteristics. Her 41 years of service in the Virgin Islands to various causes that promote equality and justice, coupled with numerous awards and recognition, prove that she is a valuable member of our community. She is proud to call St. Croix her home and Crusians her people. In the area, in the era, when the rights of women to full access to health care is being eroded in this nation, 
in an era when the voices of those who have been assaulted and raped are being put on trial because they dared to speak out. In a time when despite all efforts to protect women from partner violence and insane indignities, it is, com it is incumbent upon a university to place before its students and the community a shining example of an advocate for women and for anyone who has been the victim of abuse. Her voice has been crying out in the wilderness, sometimes alone. And thus today, we lend the voice of this university in saying her voice was not in vain and must be heard. I would therefore ask Vice Chair Oren Roebuck to bring forward the Honorable Clemma S. William Lewis. <clears throat> Therefore, we are proud to bestow upon you this day the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. In recognition of this degree, Vice Chair Roebuck will vest you with a hood, and I will present you with the diploma from the University of the Virgin Islands. We are honored to have you counted among our graduates. Congratulations. now have remarks from the following individuals in this order. Our student speaker, Michael Bell, our UVI board vice chair, Oren Roebuck, and our Senate president, Novell Francis Jr. in that order. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Hall, for my introduction. And thank you to the VIP class of 2023 for selecting me as your class speaker. <laughs> Dear fellow graduates, esteemed guests, faculty, staff, and honored speakers, it is an incredible honor to stand before you today as a student speaker of the class of 2023 at the University of the Virgin Islands, the only historically black college or university in the Caribbean. If someone had told me four years ago that I would be here speaking on behalf of my entire class, I would have called you crazy. As I stand here before you today, I cannot help but recall seeing this same campus as a little child some 15 years ago when my mom worked here. It is hard to believe that a few moments from now, I will become one of its proud graduates and alumnus, just like my aunts, my mom, and so many others before me. Yet I never considered the University of the Virgin Islands as a home to further my education. Four years ago, on the cusp of obtaining my high school diploma, I didn't know what to do after high school. I was unsure of what to do next. I had fallen prey to letting other people make me believe that college was not for me. However, after countless arguments with my mother and some sound advice from Ms. Michelle Albany from the Upward Brown program, I decided I'd apply only to the University of the Virgin Islands and see what would happen. 
I say this, my fellow graduates, because it's not how you start that's important, but how you finish. One of the most impactful resources I found here at the University of the Virgin Islands was the Summer Bridge Program, housed in the Student Center for Success under the direction of Dr. Maria Fleming. In the summer of 2019, after being accepted to UVI, I participated in the Summer Bridge Program. This was like an educational rebirth for me under the guidance of the program coordinators and the excellent teaching staff. I found a renewed confidence in myself and my academic abilities, finally allowing me to believe that I could be a successful college student. Over the last four years, this community of educators has continued to nurture, guide, aid, and support all of us as we each endeavor to complete our educational goals. After all, it truly takes a village to raise a child. First and foremost, thank you, Lord, for the blessings you have showered on me. You have surrounded me with people who always look out for me. You have given me family and friends who constantly bless me with thoughtful words and deeds. God is good all the time. I want to thank my friends, mentors, and family, especially my grandma, mom, pops. Each of you is a treasured resource and a priceless blessing in my life. Your unwavering belief in me has been a source of strength and inspiration. So thank you for your unconditional support and love during this auspicious journey. To this illustrious institution's extraordinary faculty and staff, notably Dr. Maria Fleming, Dr. Valerie Cumby, Dr. Vanda Espinosa, Ms. Michelle Albany, Ms. Anaya Lord Jarris, thank you for your unfailing support and dedication and commitment to not just my education, but to all the graduates. I want to say a special thank you to a true champion of education, an inspiration, and a devoted faculty member of the communications department, Professor Dr. Sharon A. Honoré. If it were not for her continued expertise and guidance, I would have missed out on some truly unique experiences, such as my participation in the University of the Virgin Islands Association of Black Journalist Chapter of NABJ, of which I am now the proud president of. Recently traveling to Washington, D.C. to participate in the White House press briefing with former Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms and Vice President Kamala Harris, or to Las Vegas, Nevada for our annual NEBJ National Conference, being a contributor to Voice 2.0 and host and coordinator for our annual UVI ABJ Communications Summits and Film Festivals. My dear fellow graduates, this is a day that we have been waiting for with bated breath our graduation commencement. Merriam-Webster defines commencement as an act, instance, or beginning time. Today, we end another chapter in the book of life and stand ready to start another. I'm sure like me, you are brimming with excitement, a little nervous, and overflowing with anticipation to hear your name being called out loud. We are about to embark on a monumental journey, one we will never forget. So when you walk across this stage of the only HBCU in the Caribbean, we will look up to our loved ones and proudly shout, I did it. But this is a mere stepping stone in a much larger journey for some of us. After all, a trip of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So my fellow graduates, we are going out into a world where we will be faced with challenges and adversities, both mental and physical. We'll each be pushed to the point where some may say, I can't, I won't, or I even give up. We may stumble, fall, or even lose our way when life throws us curveballs. However, when you're feeling disheartened, that you are somehow not enough, set your heart ablaze, dry your eyes and look ahead. You may feel like digging your heels in, but the flow of time waits for no one. It won't patiently stand by as you lament your failures. So stand proud, my fellow graduates, knowing that tomorrow begins anew. After all, Confucius said, our greatest glory is not in never failing, but in rising every time we fall. When you walk across this stage of the only HBCU in the Caribbean today, say to yourselves, to those watching or listening, Vini, Vidi, Vici, which simply means, I came, I saw, and I conquered. 
my fellow graduates. This speech isn't just a set of words to be spoken and forgotten. It is a call to action directed to all dignitaries present here today, members of the UVI Board of Trustees, senators, commissioners, and other community stakeholders. We, the vibrant, iconic, and profound class of 2023 are the flowers that have finally begun to bloom. We are the future leaders, doctors, politicians, commissioners, entrepreneurs, CEOs, and so much more. We stand before you as a symbol of hope and possibility, ready to face the world's challenges. I implore you to take a chance on us, not just the class of 2023, but on all students who have come before us and will come after us. Please continue to make strides in developing new opportunities for graduates, help expand our university programs, find innovative ways to support the next generation of leaders. Let us create a brighter, more promising future for all Virgin Islanders. As the late John Lennon said, a dream you dream alone is only a dream. A dream you dream together is a reality. A reality I truly hope each and every one of you believes can be a dream come true. In closing, as we embark on the next chapter in the book of our lives, my fellow graduates, I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. Let us never forget the lessons we have learned here at the University of the Virgin Islands. Let us carry them wherever we may go. There is no degree like a UVI degree. We should all take pride in our accomplishments today. St. Paul once said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Let us embrace these words and let them guide us as we grow and develop personally and professionally. And with that, thank you for allowing me to be your student class speaker. It has been an honor and a privilege to address you all today. So in the words modeled after the late, great Kobe Bryant, bell out. Good afternoon, President Hall and all dignitaries, faculty, staff, honored guests, family and supporters gathered to celebrate this special occasion. And a very special good afternoon to the VIP class of 2023. On behalf of the UVI Board of Trustees, it is indeed a pleasure and with great pride that I extend congratulations to each and every one of you on your achievement. As we witness the awarding of your degrees during the 59th anniversary of UVI, there are many to whom we owe gratitude for their unwavering commitment and support of our institution. First, the Honorable Governor Albert Bryan Jr. and the Executive Branch of the Government as well as our Lieutenant Governor Trugenzo Roach. We say thank you for continuing your work to work with the Board of Trustees and administration to continue our mission to educate and empower the U.S. Virgin Islands. Honorable Senate President Novel Francis and the members of the legislative branch, several of whom are graduates of UVI, Thank you for providing the resources and legislative action to continue our growth and development. Thank you to Delegate to Congress Stacy Plaskett for lobbying efforts to support UVI and our innovation and transformation goals. The board also extends much gratitude to Dr. David Hall. Thank you, Mr. President, for your vision, your advocacy, and your stellar leadership to ensure that our institutional mission, vision, and core values remain our focus as we strive to enhance the school, the social economic transformation of the Virgin Islands. The UVI board also extends a very special commendation and much gratitude to present and past members of our faculty, staff, and administration. Thank you for your ongoing commitment to student success, whether maintaining the grounds, ensuring security, providing academic instruction, student services, technology support, institutional advancement, 
or land grant programs and services, you are the backbone of UVI, and we appreciate your daily and tireless efforts. Thank you, Dr. Michael Eric Dyson, for visiting our beautiful islands and for bringing a keynote address and words of wisdom reminding us that we are proud, unapologetically black success story. And congratulations to doctoral candidate, Dr. Clemma Lewis. The UVI community commends and recognizes your life's work, protecting the most vulnerable in our community. Thank you for giving so much of yourself. <laughs> to the parents, spouse, families, and friends of the class of 2023, I also offer you special words of thanks and congratulations, because it is your sacrifices, support, and encouragement that contributed to the success of today. And finally, congratulations to the class of 2023, our VIPs. Your tenacity and commitment have served you well in the attainment of your goals. The Board of Trustees is keenly aware that many of you are employed full-time or part-time you maintain households and you nurture children, all while continuing your studies. Also during the course of your journey, you've navigated recoveries from not one but two devastating hurricanes and a worldwide pan pandemic which brought economic challenges and uncertainty. Yet, you persevered, persevered vicar viv vicariously, <laughs> vicariously, you are commended for your tenacity, relentless intellectual pursuit, and the sacrifices you made toward the attainment of higher education for you and your family. Thank you for choosing UVI to be a part of your iconic journey. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of the University of Virgin Islands, I extend Beth's wishes for success to you the vivacious, iconic, and profound members of the class of 2023. We look forward to big things from you. Congratulations. Uh, good afternoon, Acting Governor Ariel Smith. Have that grown on you yet? <laughs> uh, certainly my colleagues of the 35th Legislature of the Virgin Islands, and today I'm joined with Senator Keypart. I saw Senator Carrion as well as Senator James here, and our former Senator Kurt Vielle is also here. President Hall, distinguished members of the Board of Trustees, UVI faculty, staff, alumni, especially our golden class of 19, 73, family and friends, and of course, our VIP class of 2023. Good afternoon. Before I get into my presentation, I wanted to ask our male students if they could just stand. Male graduates, that is. Thank you, take your seat. I salute you. Again, um, you know, it's, you see the numbers are small, but they're here representing. On this occasion of the 59th annual commencement, it's also my privilege to welcome our esteemed keynote speaker, Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. Thank you. We appreciate your words. It was certainly necessary and certainly timely. Thank you very much. And <clears throat> I'm also honored to congratulate our class speaker, Mr. Michael Bell, who I remembered from the Bridge Program of 2019. Again, congratulations on being selected as the class speaker. In my dual role today as Acting Lieutenant Governor and Senate President, I'm honored to be among the first to congratulate Dr. Clemma Williams Lewis on this most deserved recognition of her decades 
of advocacy work on the behalf of women, children, and family. I have had the opportunity to work with Clema Lewis, Dr. Clema Lewis for over 30 years, and we appreciate you and the work that you have done in this community. I thank you for the opportunity to congratulate and say a few words to the class of 2023 on behalf of the 35th Legislature of the Virgin Islands. When I look at this class of 2023, I see superheroes. I see people whose lives were slowly returning to normal after two Category 5 hurricanes, only to be upended by a global pandemic. Superman said, there is a hero in all of us. We just need the courage to put on our cape. I know that today's graduation robes cover all of your superhero capes. These capes and robes have been earned through your sweat, hard work, and probably tears. In this class of 2023, there are students who juggle their classes with work and family. There are students who weren't sure if they'll make it to graduation. There are those of you who struggle to pass. There are those of you whose journey to get here was marked with incredible challenges. Yet, we are all here today. I meet superheroes every day, and one thing I've learned is that you don't need extraordinary physical powers to be a superhero. I don't expect anyone here to have a quick reflexes and agility of Superman, the ability to manipulate the weather and water like Aquaman, or the power to leap buildings with a single bound like Superman. I don't expect that all of you have even discovered your own superpowers yet. I hope within you are the powers of compassion to help the most vulnerable in our community. Problem solving skills, the ability to look at our problems from a different perspective and solve them. And resilience, the ability to get through tough times and to bounce back from adversities. I hope that your superpowers manifest in ways that serve you and our community well because our community needs you. We need you to be our next wave of dreamers and leaders, people who are unafraid to think big and pursue their dreams. We need you to serve at the highest levels of government. We need you to work on our hospitals and our schools. We need you to shape the future of technology. We need you to be good citizens and contribute to this community. This community deserves and encourage you and continue to nurture you in your pursuit to be your best self. Remember your duty to those less fortunate and challenge yourself to help make the Virgin Islands a better place. Whether in small or large ways, every one of us can make a difference and be a part of creating the communities that we are happy and proud to work and live in. That is a superpower that we all share. Your time here at the University of the Virgin Islands has prepared you to fully participate in our community. You have been prepared to succeed by the university the professors, teachers, and faculty of UVI have worked hard to help you to expand your minds and guide your education well. Here at UVI, you have received the best preparation for whatever lies ahead of you. The members of the 35th Legislature ap applaud all of your accomplishment and pledge to do all that we can to assist this and support the University of the Virgin Islands in its mission to provide higher education to Virgin Islanders. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge our superheroes here today the families and loved ones who have supported you and been a part of your academic journey. Let us give them a round of applause. My heartfelt congratulations to class of 2023. May your pathways be filled with many opportunities and great success. You are superheroes. God bless each and every one of you. God bless the Virgin Islands. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of those who have provided remarks for our students. We will now hear a pre-recorded um, video message from Congresswoman Stacy Plassett, and that will be followed by a video message from Governor Albert Bryan. Good afternoon to Governor Albert Bryan Jr., Lieutenant Governor Tregenza Roach, members of the Bryan Roach administration, members of our Virgin Islands legislature, the University of the Virgin Islands President, Dr. David Hall, our keynote speaker, the distinguished scholar, professor, orator, great man, and my good friend, Michael Eric Dyson, the incredibly hardworking faculty and staff of UVI, and of course, our most special guest, 
UVI's graduating class of 2023. I'd like to offer a special greetings and congratulations to my soror and this year's recipient of the Doctor of Humane Letters on the Albert Sheen campus, Mrs. Clemma Lewis, in recognition of her deep and longstanding commitment to promoting justice and equality here in our home. We all love you, Clemma. Also, special greetings and congratulations to Mr. Edward Elroy Thomas, who will receive a Doctor of Humane Letters degree on the Orville Ken campus in recognition of his exemplary public service, outstanding business leadership, and anchor role for the economic development of the Virgin Islands of the United States. I'm sorry I could not be with you there to commemorate this excellent achievement. Congress is in session this week. The great work that each of you has done to arrive at this juncture should not be taken lightly. One of the things I appreciate most about college campuses is the diversity of stories and life experiences that are found within any given graduating class. Some of you were full-time students. Some of you studied and did your share of partying as well. Then there were some of you who worked in the day and attended night classes. Some of you attended classes in the day and worked at night, and some of you did both and have still had to go home and be mom and dad. Regardless of your story, you push through your specific set of circumstances that make it here to this climactic moment, and that is worthy of celebrating. Only you and God know what challenges you had to overcome, whether physical, mental, emotional, or social, and what internal battles you had to fight to walk across this stage today. I encourage you to celebrate this moment, make room to express your gratitude and take inventory of the journey that got you here today. There is a purpose behind these actions. When we express gratitude and treasure the present for the gift that it is, we generate the energy and the bandwidth that we need for the next part of our journey. Now that you've reached this milestone, there is yet more to do and more to accomplish. You have been armed with the weapon of knowledge and experience. Your proverbial hands have been trained for war and your fingers to fight. You are now charged to go into the spheres of influence around you, be it politics, business, education, law, mental health, government, law enforcement, and to do the things that are needful to move our home forward. You are who we've all been waiting for. So go out and start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can to make a difference in our community, our nation, and our world, which so desperately needs it. Congratulations again to the University of the Virgin Islands graduating class of 2023. Thank you, and Godspeed. Good day, and congratulations to the graduating class of 2023. You know, I want to say a special thank you today to the board, Dr. Hall, and all the faculty and staff that made today a reality for our graduates. I also want to say thank you to the friends and family who added all your support over the years in order to make sure that these people cross this stage in pride today. This is the culmination of years of education, but it is the onset of what happens in real life. Today starts your journey through the educated lanes of the world. Mass opportunities are available to you in the Virgin Islands as we're in a special time as we build on our infrastructure in construction, in tourism, in finance, and even in light manufacturing. We have boundless opportunity in energy, road paving, sewage, water production. It's just a fantastic time to be alive. I want to tell you that this government supports you in all your endeavors. And as an administration, we're working hard to make sure that these opportunities abound. As you cross this stage today, reflect on the hard work that you've given over the years to bring you to this point and think about what it is you really want to accomplish in your life. It's all there for you. A little hard work, lots of discipline, and a tiny bit of work, luck and it all comes to you. I want to thank you all for being a part of our wonderful workforce here in the Virgin Islands and encourage you to continue to use your ambition to climb the ladder of success. 
You see, the thing is, all the work you're doing, it will pay off. That's a guarantee. On behalf of the administration, I would like to say a special congratulations to Dr. Clemma Lewis and Dr. Edward Thomas. Your contributions to this community have been boundless. And I would be remiss if I didn't say a special congratulations to Government's House own Shanice Jarvis, who graduates today. We are so proud of you. God bless you and God keep you on your way. Congratulations. This community needs you. The Department of Justice needs you. Um, but I, I just, I wish you the very best and stay encouraged. Know in your spirit that you can do whatever is before you to do. It's not gonna be easy because it's not meant to be. But when you look back of where you've came from and where you are today, then you know whatever is ahead of you, you can also do it. Again, congratulations to the family, to the friends, to my Sora, who I am. This is my first time meeting her, but I am so impressed. She's encouraging me to go out and just do more. So be encouraged. God bless you all, and God bless Virgin Islands. At this point, we will have a musical selection uh, by the Voices of Praise Community Choir, AKA Voices of Inspiration of UVI. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, and after the selection, uh, Provost McHale will come forward and we will start the part of the ceremony that I know you have been waiting for. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, and things on earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah.
thank you for the graduates. We thank you for the family. And God, right now, we just magnify and glorify and adore your name. Hallelujah. Vivacious, iconic, profound, class of 2023. Are you ready? <laughs> Mr. President, the formal conferring of degrees is an ancient custom filled with dignity and majesty. Ours is that and more. And it's in that spirit that I encourage you upon hearing your graduates name call that you go ahead and cheer. However, keep it to a minimum so that the names of all our graduates can be heard. Okay? I also ask that you remain in your seats as there will be no pictures taken on the floor, especially not here. Professional photographs were already taken of requested graduates. Thank you for your understanding and cooperation on behalf of our students, faculty, and administration. Mr. President, it gives me great just pleasure to present to you the candidate for the Doctor of Philosophy degree in, create, in Creative Leadership for Innovation and Change. Candidate for the Doctor of Philosophy degree in Creative Leadership for Innovation and Change, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, Upon the recommendation of the faculty and the PhD Council, I am pleased to present to you the candidate for of University of the Virgin Islands for the Doctor of Philosophy degree in Creative Leadership for Innovation and Change. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the government of the Virgin Islands and the Board of Trustees of the University of the Virgin Islands, I hereby confer upon you the Doctor of Philosophy degree in Creative Leadership for Innovation and Change with all the rights 
privileges and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Graduate for the Doctor of Philosophy in Creative Leadership for Innovation and Change, please proceed to the stage to be hooded and to receive your diploma. Kathleen Ogaro, Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Philosophy in Creative Leadership for Innovative Change. Her dissertation is Forging a Brighter Future, a Creative Problem Solving Parenting Model for Stressed Mothers of Caribbean Descent. Congratulations, graduate. Please be seated. Mr. President, the candidates for the Master of Accounting, Master of Business Administration, Master of Arts Educational Leadership, and Master of Public Administration will be presented by the deans of the respective schools and colleges. Dr. Kendra Harris, School of Business. Dr. Karen Brown, School of Education, and Dr. Kimmery Engerman, College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Mr. President, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the candidate <laughs> the candidates for the Master of Accounting and Master of Business Administration degrees. Candidates for the Master of Accounting and Master of Business Administration degrees, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, Upon the recommendation of the faculty and the School of Business, I am pleased to present to you the candidates of the University of the Virgin Islands for the Master of Accounting and Master of Business Administration degrees. Mr. President, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the candidates for the Master of Arts Educational Leadership degree. Candidates for the Master of Arts Educational Leadership degree, please rise. Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty and the School of Education, I am pleased to present to you the candidates of the University of the Virgin Islands for the Master of Arts Educational Leadership degree. Mr. President, 
It gives me great pleasure to present to you the candidates for the Master of Public Administration degree. Candidates for the Master of Public, Public Administration degree, please rise. Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the Faculty and the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, I am pleased to present to you the candidates of the University of the Virgin Islands for the Master of Public Administration degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the government of the Virgin Islands and the Board of Trustees of the University of the Virgin Islands, I hereby confer upon you, en masse, the Master of Accounting, the Master of Business Administration, the Master of Art, Educational Leadership, the Master of Public Administration, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations. Graduates, for the degrees, Master of Accounting, Master of Business Administration, Master of Arts Educational Leadership, and Master of Public Administration, please proceed to the stage to receive your diploma. Kenesha L. Brown, Master of Accounting. Shanisa Emmanuel, Master of Accounting. Monifa C. McIntosh, Master of Accounting. Mr. Mr. T. Williams, Master of Accounting. Felix Ford, Master of Business Administration. Veronica J. Ortiz, Master of Business Administration. Tashona J. Thompson, Master of Business Administration. Katy L. Torre, Master of Business Administration. Herschel L. Edwards Bartlett, Master of Arts in Education Leadership. Martha Nelson, Master of Arts in Educational Leadership. Hazel J. Philip Titus, Master of Arts in Educational Leadership. Wilson C. Ferenc, Master of Public Administration. Janine P. Perez Santos, Master of Public Administration.
Congratulations, graduates. Please be seated. <laughs> Mr. President, the candidates for the baccalaureate and associate degrees from five of our six schools and colleges and universities will be presented by the respective deans of the schools and colleges. I know Dr. Hall had said I'd introduce all the deans now, so at this point, I want to introduce Dean Usman Adamu from the School of Agriculture, who will have graduates in years to come. Dr. Kendra Harris, School of Business. Dr. Karen Brown, School of Education. Dr. Kimmery Engerman, College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Dr. Beverly Lanzico, Class of 1973, School of Nursing. And Dr. Sandra Romano, College of Science and Mathematics. Mr. President, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Business Administration from the School of Business. Candidates, please rise. Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty and the School of Business, I am pleased to present to you the candidates of the University of the Virgin Islands for the Bachelor of Business Administration degree in Accounting, Hospitality and Tourism Management, Management and Marketing. Candidates of the School of Business, please be seated. Mr. President, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts and Associate of Arts degrees from the School of Education. Candidates, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty and the School of Education, I am pleased to present to you the candidates of the University of the Virgin Islands for the Bachelor of Arts and Associate of Arts degrees in elementary education and inclusive early childhood education. Candidates of the School of Education, please be seated. Mr. President, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Associate of Applied Science degrees from the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Candidates, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty and the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, I present to you the candidates of the University of the Virgin Islands for the Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice and Psychology, Bachelor of Arts degree in Communication, Criminal Justice, English, Psychology, music education, and the Associate of Applied Science degree in criminal justice. Candidates of the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, please be seated. Mr. President, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree from the School of Nursing.
candidates, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty and the School of Nursing, I am pleased to present to you the candidates of the University of the Virgin Islands for the Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. Candidates of the School of Nursing, please be seated. Mr. President, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Science and Associate of Applied Science degrees from the College of Science and Mathematics. Candidates, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty, and the College of Science and Mathematics, I present to you the candidates of the University of the Virgin Islands for the Bachelor of Science degree in Biology, Computer Science, Mathematics and Physics, and the Associate of Applied Science degree in Process Technology. Candidates of the College of Science and Mathematics, please be seated. Will all the candidates for the baccalaureate and associate degrees please rise? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the government of the Virgin Islands and the Board of Trustees of the University of the Virgin Islands, I hereby confer upon you, en masse, the Bachelors of Art degree in Biology, Business Administration, Communication, Criminal Justice, Elementary Education, English, Inclusive Early Childhood Education, Management, Music, Education, and psychology. The bachelors of business administration degree in accounting, hospitality and tourism management, management and marketing. The bachelor of science degree in biology, computer science, criminal justice, mathematics, nursing, physics and psychology. The associates of art degree in elementary education and inclusive <clears throat> early childhood education, and the Associates of Applied Science degree in criminal justice and process technology. With all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations, graduates. You may be seated. <clears throat> Graduates of the School of Business, please rise and proceed to the stage to receive your diploma. Alexia A. Adams, Bachelors of Business Administration in Marketing, magna cum laude. Petra Carbon George, Bachelor of Business Administration in Accounting, magna cum laude. Darwin A. Christian III, Bachelor of Business Administration in Management, cum laude. Siobhan Chapa, Bachelors of Business Administration in Management, Summa Cum Laude.
Sonia Ewers Harty, Bachelors of Business Administration and Accounting, Magna Cum Laude. Liliana J. Familia, Bachelors of Business Administration in Hospitality, Tourism, and Management. Kimishia O. Joe Garvey, Bachelors of Business Administration in Hospitality, Tourism, and Management. Kimberly Giroux, Bachelors of Arts in Management, Magna Cum Laude. Bianca J. Guadalupe, Bachelors of Business Administration in Hospitality, Tourism, and Management. Shanice L. Jarvis, Bachelors of Business Administration in Management. Adia L. Lang, Bachelors of Business Administration in Hospitality, Tourism, and Management. Elijah W. Mota, Bachelors of Business Administration in Management. Francesca Parija, Bachelors of Business Administration in Hospitality, Tourism, and Management. Joshua L. Ramsunagar, Bachelors of Business Administration in Accounting, Magna Cum Laude. Sherika Randall, Bachelors of Business Administration in Hospitality, Tourism, and Management. Francine J. Roberts, Bachelors of Business Administration in Management. Beverly D. Scotland Lawrence, Bachelors of Business Administration in Accounting, Cum Laude. Janelle C. Tyson, Bachelors of Business Administration in Marketing, Magna Cum Laude. Ariane M. R. Victoria, Bachelors of Business Administration in Management. Graduates of the School of Business, please be seated. Graduates of the School of Education, please rise and proceed to the stage to receive your diploma. Solange Florent, Bachelor of Arts in Pre-Education, Minor in Psychology.
Graduates of the School of Education, please be seated. Graduates of the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, please rise and proceed to the stage to receive your diploma. Angel D. Padija Arbolida, Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice. Laurie Elise Armstrong, Bachelor of Science in Psychology, minor in Sociology, cum laude. Alex Ann, Alex Ann N. Carr, Bachelor of Science in Psychology, summa cum laude. Michael Christopher Vidal Bell, Bachelor of Arts in Communication, magna cum laude. Okay. Ashley T. Challenger, Bachelor of Science in Psychology, cum laude. Rifka Dean, Bachelor of Science in Psychology, magna cum laude. And Peratrice Del Delgadillo, Bachelor of Science in Psychology, magna cum laude. Delca Adora Marie Bois, Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice, cum laude. Ira S. Francis, Bachelor of Arts in Music Science, AKA Player Player. Michaela J. James, Bachelor of Arts in Psychology, minor in Fine Arts, magna cum laude. Ariel Alexandria Joseph, Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice. Kiera Joseph, Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice. Yasmin Lawrence, Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice, cum laude. Sheila L. Machu, Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice, cum laude. Anisha J. Stanley, Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice. Kadeja Stevens, Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. Dana Danelle Smith, Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. Sharifa R. Springer, Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice. Tariq T. Turnbull, Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice. Jewelis Monique Foy, Associate of Applied Science in Criminal Justice. Sh Shakira Figueroa, Associate in, in, in Science.
graduates of the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, please be seated. Graduates of the School of Nursing, please rise and proceed to the stage to receive your diploma. Chael M. Chazu, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Veronica Diaz, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, cum laude. Shanice, Shanice A. Felix, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Dominique Ashley Galaber, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Kiana J. Garib, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Summa Cum Laude. Italia Henry, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Magna Cum Laude. Kiara L. Jarvis, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Elsie Malcolm, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Lashanda R. Michael, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. With a minor in Sociology. Viviana M. Monell, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Graduates of the School of Nursing, please be seated. <laughs> Graduates of the College of Science and Mathematics, please rise and proceed to the stage to receive your diploma. Amanda G. Boussier, <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Marine Biology. <laughs> e. Sonica C. Charles, Bachelor of Science in Biology, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Kenisha Florence, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science.
Jareem R. Thompson, Bachelor of Science in Mathematics and Physics. Tyler C. Valmont, Bachelor of Arts in Biology. Jane Camacho, Associate of Applied Science in Process Technology. Ron P. Duncan, Associate of Applied Science in Process Technology. Paul, Paul A. Edwards, Associate of Applied Science in Process Technology. Winston W. Ferrance, Associate of Applied Science in Process Technology. Lance Anthony Frank, Associate of Applied Science and Process Technology. <laughs> Aliyah A. Jackson, Associate of Applied, Applied Science and Process Technology. Raymond Soko, Associate of Applied Science in Process Technology. Graduates of the College of Science and Mathematics, please be seated. Will all the candidates for the baccalaureate and associate degree please rise? Now, graduates, please move your tassel from the right side to the left side of your Congratulations, please be seated. As, as we reach conclusion, it is my obligation to give you your charge since you are now graduates. I charge you to live up to your name, not only the name given to you by your parents, but the name that you have embraced of being vivacious, iconic, and profound, and to embrace it according to the definition that you have been provided by our keynote speaker.
And we also ask you to give back to the Virgin Islands. The government of the Virgin Islands, the University of the Virgin Islands has invested in you. And so we ask you to give back, either through employment, through service, or through some way in which you can make the lives of the people of the Virgin Islands better. And I charge you specifically to keep up this tradition that you have started of giving back to UVI. If you can do 86% while you are a student, once you start earning money, I know you can do 100%. Never forget where you have come from and we can benefit from your support. But finally, I charge you to be happy. No matter how difficult life becomes, no matter how much you are engaged in challenging situations, personally or professionally, always tap into that place of joy, that divine joy that will allow you to be happy on your road to success. We are so proud of each one of you, for we know what you have overcome to be at this place, and we wish you nothing but abundant success on the rest of your journey. Congratulations. I would now call Vice President of Institutional Advancement, Michelle Neves, to the podium to induct the graduates into the University Alumni Association. Good afternoon. The VIP class of 2023, please rise. You are now officially recognized as alumni of the University of the Virgin Islands. Your lifelong connection to this fine institution continues through your active participation in the UVI Alumni Association. Welcome to this prestigious body of stakeholders, which is an integral part of the UVI family. Congratulations. Please be seated. Before we sing the alma mater and have the benediction, I need to thank a long list of individuals who made this day very, very possible. Of course, our keynote speaker and our honorary degree recipient, we are delighted that you were able to join us and having enriched this experience. But it is those individuals behind the scenes that really make a difference. I want to recognize our commencement committee, uh, chaired by Ms. Narita Washington, for working for most of the year to prepare for this event. Please applaud them. I'd like to recognize the members of the president's office who worked in conjunction with the commencement committee uh, to make sure that this event was successful that includes Una Dyer, Jessica Laplace, Jessica Taylor, and Gail Steele. Our physical plant and security personnel who worked hard to make sure this tent was constructed to make sure that you could park and be safe, please thank them for their support. The music department that has provided music to you under the leadership of Dion Parson, the chair of the department, and Ms. Josephine Thomas Williams of Voices of Praise. Josephine Thomas Williams. Uh, Yuna. <laughs> Lewis, my apologies for Voices of Praise Community Choir, 
which undercover is really the UVI Voices for Inspiration. <clears throat> and Eric Willey, who is a Dr. Eric Willey. <laughs> Congratulations. Our access and enrollment services area under the leadership of Dr. Pamela Moulinar Worzi and Dr. Manifa Potter and their team. It's not always that you come on stage and actually get your degree as, a, <clears throat> as opposed to a blank tube. They work hard to make sure everyone receives their degree. Please thank them for that. <clears throat> Our public relations office under the leadership of Tamika Thomas Williams and team for all that they have done to publicize this event for us. Our information technology services area under the leadership of Vice President Charlene Harris for working with us uh, to make sure that this event uh, was conducted appropriately and uh, to Media One, our external uh, vendor for ensuring that this event was live streamed and recorded appropriately. Institutional advancement and alumni affairs under the leadership of Vice President Michelle Neves uh, for the work that was done with you to reach that 86% goal, Ms. Sophia Johnson. <clears throat> our accounting department, our volunteers, and all of our platform guests who made this possible. I hope it got a little cooler as the day went on. A little bit, right? So I want to thank our external vendor working with Ms. Washington to try to air condition a tent. Uh, <clears throat> It's not ideal, but we're just trying to make it a little better uh, until our acting uh, governor uh, works to make sure we have this multi-purpose facility. <laughs> have a talk with the governor once he gets back. <laughs> and of course, all of you as parents and friends, thank you for coming out. Thank you for your patience and for your joy that you have shared with our graduates. We really appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, we can conclude with the alma mater, which will be followed by benediction given by Ariel Joseph, Joseph, and then we will have our recession. Thank you.
bow our heads and close our eyes and feel the presence of God as we come to the ending of the ceremony. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of family, friends, and teachers who have supported us and celebrate with us today. Bless these graduates and guests and fill them with the spirit of your love. We pray that as they go forth to set the world on fire, may they remember that you are in all things and all people. May they continue to challenge themselves intellectually and share the fruit of their knowledge. May they remain an important part of our UBI community and may they, through their ongoing growth in wisdom and grace, bring others to you as they share their talents in a wider world. We ask that you protect and guide these men and women throughout their lives. And when we look back and look now into the future, we will know and be satisfied it is well with our souls. May God grant each and every one of you traveling mercies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
Oh, 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 oh,